Hey everyone, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series, the series where we take mocks from the community, showcase them, and give you some ideas for things to work on in the future. This episode is on leg designs. We've done a few leg design episodes in the past, but this one's a little different because it focuses on legs as a whole. Be sure as well to stay tuned to the end of the episode where you can find out how you can submit some of your own mocks, or some of your own theme ideas, or just give some critique on the show, anything like that. Anyway, let us begin the episode with a mock by Golden Arpeggio, otherwise known as L.A. Miranda, and this mock is called VC Doll Tamer. So something I think that's really cool to kind of address with leg designs is, you know, sometimes you don't need to overcomplicate it. Maybe you've built something and you're like, oh man, I've got to be super custom. And when I say custom, by the way, this is this, is, this dawned on me recently, is how <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, like when people like cut pieces or paint pieces or, you know, do, do something that is you know, against the grain is not an actual purest part. Um, people refer to that as custom. But sometimes I use the word custom and I refer to like, oh, instead of building this leg as just a, a plain Hero Factory bone, I'm going to actually, you know, use some socket joints and some axles and essentially make a custom version. But it's not custom as in like, you know, cut pieces and stuff. So there's a weird, weird discrepancy there when I say custom. I don't, I don't know the words to like fix that, but Okay, from now on in this in this episode specifically, if I say the word custom, I do not mean cut, painted, or blah blah blue. I mean like, uh, you know, using a whole bunch of different pieces to make a version of a piece in a more detailed manner. <laughs> that is what I mean. Anyway, maybe you're building something and a lot of the the mock is custom, and you're sort of like, oh man, I really gotta really gotta continue this whole custom thing, or like, oh, I don't want to do you know CCBS bones and just be simple and stuff. Maybe, maybe you can be. Why not? Who, who says you need to be, you know? Maybe maybe if that's the look you're going for, then maybe you do. But hey, why not give that a go? Why not just actually just straight up do it, you know, really simple, really easy CCBS bones or, you know, bionicle limbs. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Or you can do something a little bit similar to this mock where you use some pre-existing parts. Like, for example, we can see here the white uh, Kupaka Nuva bone pieces that you typically saw. I guess those are bone pieces, arm pieces, whatever you want to call them, but you saw them on the Toa Nuva sets. Uh, and here, Golden Arpeggio has used them very nicely for the legs there, which flow very easily up into a more custom upper leg design. And it's cool because they have this sort of slight arch to them, because that's just how the piece was. It really adds to the sort of feminine aspect of this mock. I think that's really, really cool and a great way to use those parts, because that angle that they have can make it a little bit more difficult to work with. Um, but that's what I'm saying, you know. Some of those parts that, you know, it is literally just one piece. Like like this, the lower leg is one piece. With, okay, a little bit of extra details on the back and stuff like that. But essentially, it doesn't, like, it, it would be unnecessary to make it hugely custom. It works very nicely like that. So why not consider that? Why not just grab a couple pieces and just simply use that? See how it works. If it doesn't work, oh well, at least you tried it. Try something else. There's a lot of other things I love about this mock. Really, really awesome leg design, but let's let's touch up upon some other cool stuff. Really nice to see a system head design there, and even cooler to see how the hair design on this mock works. It's uh, kind of a more obscure sort of uh, boat hull kind of piece there that's used for the hair, and then sort of adding a whole bunch of other curved slopes and things there to kind of give the rest of the hair on the sides and stuff. It makes a really fantastic hair design. It looks awesome. And then the head design in itself is made out of system. The arms as well are made out of system. And it's a great way to get some really organic, natural shapes to them, whether it's on the hair or whether it's on the arms and stuff. Things just look really realistic. And the proportions seem very human and very real. So very cool, very, very awesome stuff. Speaking of very awesome stuff, one thing that's very cool about this Mach 2 is the weapon. Uh, she's got a whip, which is really unique. You don't see that every day. It's very cool. Uh, and in the little description here, it says that it's actually made out of an old headphone. So not technically purist. It's just, you know, some random headphones that they found. But I think that's really cool, you know? Who says you have to use Lego pieces? Why not branch out and, I don't know, just use some random thing you found on the floor? Why not, you know? Why not? Sometimes sometimes it's nice to break the rules. Let's, you know, just, just do it. Just do it. Who knows? So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really cool stuff to love about this mock and some really unique concepts used on the legs here. So nice work, LA Miranda. Let's move on to the next mock, which is called Pilgrim. And that is by... Vince Toulouse. Vince, Vince Toulouse? Something like that. So what I love so much about this is that sometimes it's nice to just try something funky with a leg design. You know, maybe you've built the torso and the legs are the last thing that you're going to work on. And you're there going, 
oh, geez, I don't know what, I don't know what to do now, <laughs> you know? Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes you, you're building an aspect of a mock and you just cannot figure out for the life of you how to build an arm or a leg or, or, or something, something, doesn't matter what it is. But, you know, maybe, maybe the solution was, you know, kind of right in front of you the whole time. Maybe it's uh, a little bit more unique. Maybe it's a little bit more different. And I think this mock is a really nice example of that. A lot of these tentacle pieces are from, you know, various, like, tails on certain sets, like some of the old dinosaurs, things like that. These tail pieces of, uh, they're a little less common these days, which is a shame, but they're beautiful pieces and create, they, they create some very, very nice organic shapes. And just sort of repeating them there for the leg design here is really unique and, and it flows very well with the rest of the mock. And the fact as well that a lot of this mock is actually made out of Galador pieces. If you look around, you can kind of notice some of them, like this big dark green piece here is a Galador part, and some of the ways that the tentacles are connected to it have some Galador pieces on it too. Even the wings at the back here use some Galador parts, and that's a very nice part use in my opinion, because it very much looks like this sort of insect wing design. You know, they've used some of these Ant-Man uh, wing pieces from the old Ant-Man set, and just partnering those with those Galador pieces, it looks so insect-like and they just complement each other very well those two parts and really creates a, a nice sort of not quite dr seuss but like a, a i don't know there's a very unique aesthetic to this mock and i think that's very cool and very unique and that's kind of where i'm getting at with this leg design concept that i'm kind of covering on this mock is maybe you've got a more unique style mock so give them a more unique style leg design or maybe you don't you know but definitely kind of branch out and think of some really unique or interesting leg designs that aren't just the simple, you know, humanoid two legs. Maybe they have 20 legs. Maybe they have one leg. Maybe they have a peg leg. Who knows? But uh, definitely something to think about. And again, like we covered with the last mock, not overly complicated, not using a huge amount of pieces. It's just a few pieces, but they're repeated a bunch. Uh, and it flows very well with the rest of the mock. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot to love about it. A lot of unique, awesome things to play with. I think that's very, very cool. Also cool to see a uh, system stand underneath it as well. Just just looks nice yeah just a nice way to kind of cap off the mock there it's very cool so excellent work on this mock known as the pilgrim let's move on to the next mock which is by icoso and the mock is of course also called icoso so i assume this is his self mock before we begin i believe there are some bootleg pieces on this correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think if you look at the shoulder here that uh, that sort of uh, semicircle shoulder bit there and maybe some of those dark blue pieces, just because they've got the printing on them. I want to say those are bootleg pieces. Not that that's a problem. There's nothing wrong with that. We've covered this before in the Bionicle Inspiration series. There's uh, all sorts of bootleg pieces you can get from all these sort of third-party CCBS sets that come with really unique colors and unique pieces and things like that. Why not use them in some mocks, you know? Again, it's up to you whether or not you want to be purist or not. But, hey, if you get some really cool results and get to use some cool colors that didn't exist previously, yeah, why not? Why not give it a go? Anyway, let's cover the leg design on this mock because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here with it. So if you kind of look on the upper legs there, you can almost sort of make out some lift arms and a few other things that kind of make up the basic frame of the mock. Now, I'm only guessing here. I don't know his exact process, but the way that I imagine this leg was done is that, you know, he took a few socket connections and a few other things and got some lift arms and sort of made a basic frame for the upper and lower legs and then started adding in details and stuff like that. So you, know, you look around on those upper legs, you can see some system uh, wedge pieces in dark blue. So that's a bit of a way to kind of branch out that dark blue. And you even see a little bit of that on the uh, lower arm there as well, using some more system pieces there. But it's a great way to continue the color there and, and an even better way to sort of add something on the side there to kind of cover up some of that detail. But it's very cool, you know, to, to see system very nicely integrated and it flows quite well with the rest of the bionicle there. And texture wise, it's not too, you know, disrupting or anything. It just flows nicely. So cool to see how well system is uh, integrated in there. And then even cooler to see sort of around that uh, upper leg there, you kind of look at those Rakshi pieces up there, or I don't quite know what you'd call them, but they're on the sides of the knees there, these sort of, uh, they were kind of shoulder pieces on Toa Ignica, am I correct with that? Maybe I'm wrong. But didn't Matoro have some as well? Maybe not. Maybe not. Bionicle knowledge is being tested once again. But it's cool to sort of see those pieces that have been put on there that are sort of, covering up quite a lot of the uh, the leg in that in that area, but the sort of shape of them is a lot more organic and smooth and a bit more natural. And that's kind of a really nice way to make the leg look more humanoid, make it look more realistic. So I definitely think it, that's a good idea is to sort of look for pieces like that that really kind of create the natural shape of a leg design and then just put them in in the places that it's necessary and then it makes 
pretty much the rest of the leg look a lot more organic and a lot more smooth and a lot nicer. It's really cool. Really nice addition there. And speaking of a really nice addition, if we go to the lower legs now, we can see some of these Hero Factory gun pieces from, was that Breakout? I think those were the, uh, the gun bits. You see that that sort of takes up the majority of the lower leg there, that one piece. And I think, again, that's another really cool thing. So if you're going for a little bit more of a custom leg design, why not grab one or two pieces that are quite large that will essentially make up the bulk of the leg, and you kind of just build off of that. Sort of a more simple, easy way to kind of get the overall shape and overall design. I think it works quite well, and I think this is sort of a good example of how, yeah, just how well that can work. Also, too, this is a debate you often see sometimes. Some people are like, ah, you can see the pins. So if you look around on the mock, of course, you can see all these red pins exposed. And sometimes people debate that that's bad. You know, maybe you've built a blue mock, but you can see all the... Sorry, maybe you've built a black mock, but you can see all the blue pins inside it. So it sort of disrupts the color scheme in some aspects. And look, sometimes that's a bit harder to avoid because, you know, it's just the nature of Bionicle. A lot of the pins are the, you know, the wrong colors. And sometimes finding them in black, either they don't exist in black or they don't exist in the color you need so that it works with the color scheme or you just don't have them in black. So it's up to you whether or not that's an, that's an issue for you. But, you know, sometimes it upsets some people and that's okay. It's allowed. You're allowed to be upset. But I think this mock has uh, done something very clever where it was obviously a dark blue and silver mock, but with all the red uh, pins and stuff, he's actually introduced a little bit more red to kind of add a third accent color, which is very, very clever and very nice. So you can see all the, the ball joints there are red. He's added some claws that are red, even a little bit of red sort of where the neck is and stuff, just to add an additional color. So that's a really nice way to not have to worry about the pins being a sort of contrasting color. I mean, it's very, very clever. So yeah, really cool to see some more primarily custom aspects on this mock. Custom again, like I said, not the bootleg bit. Custom in terms of not just straight CCBS bones or straight bionicle leg or arm pieces, all that sort of stuff. Really nice to see all of that used on here. Uh, sort of if you're going for a more sort of complex angle. Also, two quick final things before we move on. Very awesome stuff. It's really simple. Doesn't use too many pieces, but it looks really nice. Looks really cool. And also really cool to see a rubber band being used there on the head design. To, uh, to sort of show the eyes there. Very unique, very cool, great idea, you know? Maybe you've built a head, but you just don't know where to put the eyes. Maybe you can just use a rubber band or something. Very cool, really like that. So, nice work on that. Let's move on to the bonus mark, which is by Shadow Gear 6335 and is called Factory. Now, we were talking about using some more obscure, interesting parts that uh, you might not normally see. Well, take a look at this. So, from what Alera said in a previous podcast, Shadow Gear went to a uh, flea market, I think it was, and he found some old Mars mission sets. And in doing so, he found one set that had a whole bunch of sand purple, these cool sort of almost trans gray tubes there, and then he went to do some pick a brick stuff and found some sand green. And so he decided, heck, I'm going to combine all these colors, get a beautiful color scheme that's very unique and I barely see it. Uh, and create this really awesome, really clever, really unique leg design. And so what I love so much about this is, I mean, I very, very rarely see people use these old Life on Mars or Mars Mission uh, tube pieces because they're kind of just big, cumbersome, and, you know, well, hard to use, right? But Shadow Gear's done a fantastic job and has used them in such a clever way to make them a big old leg design. It's awesome. It's very, very clever. Very, very cool. So yeah, why not sort of look at some of those more obscure pieces that you've had for years and they're just sitting in a box and you've never used them and you think, God, I never could use them. Well, maybe take a look at them. Maybe see what you can do with them because who knows? Maybe you can do something unique and cool with them. And speaking of unique and cool, one thing that's uh, really awesome about this mock is, you know, the little guy sort of where the arms and the head and all that is, he can either be up top or up the bottom. And so the very nature of these... Uh, these sort of tubes is that, you know, obviously they're sort of a bit bouncy and a bit movie and you can kind of do a lot of posing and movement with them and stuff. And so that kind of lends itself to the rest of the body. So either the, the sort of humanoid aspect of this mock can be on the bottom or on the top or on the side or whatever. And that's really clever. And, and, and I mean, <laughs> this obviously takes a lot of planning and thought. So well done, Shadow Gear. But to be able to have the very obscure parts, the nice piece usages actually in a way also affect the character. That's very clever. That's very, very cool. So, um, yeah, if you can get to that level, man, do so. But it's, uh, it takes a little bit more planning, a little bit more thought. But uh, nothing's impossible. So see what you can do. Anyway, that's it for four really interesting, really cool, and surprisingly different but awesome leg designs from four very talented and very awesome builders. 
Speaking of those builders, if you'd like to see a little bit more from them, be sure to check the links in the description because all of the links to the mocks you saw today are there. And if you uh, kind of keep looking in those links, you can also find the other mocks that they've done. And all of these guys have done some other amazing, amazing mocks, so be sure to check them out. Now, as promised, if you are interested in submitting a mock of your own to the Bionicle Inspiration series, you of course can. In the links in the description that I mentioned before, you can also find my social media. There you have my Instagram, my Facebook, my Flickr, all sorts of different stuff like that. All of them have personal messaging systems. Just chuck me a message, say, hey Ben, I'd like to submit this for Bionicle. For, for Bionicle? For the Bionicle Inspiration series. And uh, give me a link, give me some photos, give me a name, all sorts of stuff like that. And then I'll put it on my list. And one day it'll come on the show. More recently, I've been uh, trying to sort of form episodes around the submissions because uh, I've got a lot. So uh, I'm trying to get as many as I can. So far, I've been pretty good. I've been able to get two per episode so far. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of keep doing that. So be sure to submit because you're more than likely to be on the show. And if you're not, maybe you'll be on the next one. I do aim to put everyone in at some point, so don't you worry. Anyway, that's about it. Don't be afraid to submit. I'm happy to see anything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, guys.